Hey guys, this is Valerie Ortiz from Disney's Gabby Duran and the Unsittables. And I'm sitting here with Elias for the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to another episode of the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to the party, pal. You're my boy, bro. Yo, it. It. A podcast with interviews of amazing guests from the world of pop culture. Oh, yeah. TV. Nice. Movies. Oh, I love the movies. Comedy and more from deep inside the Man Cave. Your host, Elias. Valerie, welcome to the cave. Thanks so much for having me. How are you? What's new with you? Uh, I'm good. I, um, I'm in Vancouver, uh, starting season two of Gabby. So I just got out of a, a sitting, and um, it's not that cold. So I am a happy girl. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, you star, <laughs> you star in Disney's, Disney Channel's uh, Gabby Duran, The Uncitables, and you just recently released a children's book as well. We'll talk about that. But I want the listeners to get to know a little more about you. Where are you originally from? I was born in Puerto Rico, um, and I was raised in Orlando, Florida. Oh, wow. What uh, what made the decision for your family to move to Orlando? Um, Orlando, uh, my cousins, like, my dad was in the National Guard, so, and he, like, went back and forth. He was born in Puerto Rico, too, but from New York, and then when he was in the National Guard, um, he was in Texas, too, so he had a taste of the States. So I think for him, you know, he tried to convince my mom that, you know, it'd be a better life for my brother and I, blah, blah, blah. And it worked. Yeah. Um, we moved to Miami first and then they explored Florida a little bit. And then we landed in Orlando wow. and uh, we had some family that lived there too. So that helped the yeah. the move and the transition. Yeah. So as a kid growing up, uh, what were you into? <laughs> I'm well, being that I grew up in Orlando, um, I like to be and all that stuff, but I was a big fan of dance, honestly. Dance was my first love. Um, and then I think when I got into middle school, like ballet wasn't cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I stopped, which I wish I would have never stopped. Um, but I like that. I mean, I grew, I have an older brother, and we kind of just were always doing videos and whatnot at home. So that kind of helped in bringing me into like the entertainment world um, outside of dance. Yeah. Um, writing was a big thing, which is what brought my whole, you know, um, dream of publishing my book. And yeah, honestly, it was always something creative. Yeah. So like, wh- how old were you when you decided like, okay, when I grow up, this is, I want to get into the acting business. This is what I want to go do. Man, honestly, when I took it seriously like that, I would say it was late, like high school. Okay. And I say late because, I mean, I'm on a children's show and, you know, these little kids are babies and have like, you know, these huge dreams and they're already making them happen. Um, but in high school, I went to a theater magnet high school in Orlando. Um, and that's when I learned a little bit more about like the biz and the agents and the headshots and um, that whole deal. Um, so I'd say, yeah, high school, which feels kind of late. <laughs> You have to start somewhere, right? Right. Yes. Oh yeah. Was there uh, any uh, any other uh, like uh, movies or TV shows that also gave you that push? Also, after, you know, growing up and you enjoyed watching. Yeah, I mean, I I was a big fan of like the Disney Channel Nickelodeon shows growing up. Um, but I, honestly, I think it was my brother, just because he's older, and I just was fascinated by everything that he was fascinated yeah. with. So, and he would, like, dissect movies and, like, the ETs and the whatever, Jurassic Parks, and, you know, just go into things in a just cooler level than I probably would have ever have, and yeah. that definitely was intriguing. And then he went to the Theater Magnet High School, so I went to the Theater Magnet High School, and um, he definitely kind of gave me that push to, I'd say, look into things more than I think I would have. And, I mean, I loved watching Selena. Obviously, yeah. I J-Lo's a big influence. I love her. and um but yeah, it was it was it's all his fault. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So how did you get started in acting then? What was that after high school? What did you do? So um, I went to the University of Central Florida for my for theater. Um, we I had auditioned for to other like big schools and stuff like that, but couldn't really afford it. So I stayed local, um, and that was great. And I booked a TV show actually hosting called Splat. Um, it was like a live game show for kids um, on Nickelodeon. And then 
because of that show, like our contract got extended and I had to not start my junior year of college, which was like dun 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 for like my parents, you know, like, yay, oh my gosh. Um, and for me too. Um, and because we took that semester off after that show wrapped, uh, a friend and I um, from the show, we took this road trip to LA from Orlando. Um, and we're like, yeah, that'll be fine. And then I guess really the rest is history. One of my best friends introduced me to my manager, who I'm still with after 15 years. That's awesome. And I decided to stay in LA and yeah. <laughs> see what happens. And it it worked out. <laughs> there you go. And now you star in Disney Channel's Gabby Duran and the Uncitables. There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for the listeners, <laughs> can you tell what the show is about? Yeah, so... Um, for anybody who has kids, it's kind of fun because it is a book series that the show is based off of. So that's kind of a cute little um, thing to know if, you know, kids are that reading age or, you know, bedtime story type of thing. Um, they could get into the books. But uh, Gabby Duran and the Incidables is about a young girl. She moves to this new town uh, called Havensburg, actually from Miami, which is kind of fun um, because Florida, obviously. Um, and her mom, uh, me, who I play, Dina, gets a new job um in Havensburg as an on-air reporter and um she's kind of she kind of has a hard time like fitting in like she's not like the um studious type uh and she gets a job as a babysitter and Dina her mom is all excited for her um but unbeknownst to her it's babysitting aliens hmm. and that's that's really where everything yeah, starts yeah, yeah. <laughs> um do you remember your audition for that and tell us about that funny man because the audition for that it was super fast and by the way my character started as a recurring and pretty much that means you're not a regular you just kind of pop in yeah. and a few episodes here and out um so that's what it started um as and i i went in honestly thinking like there's no way i'm gonna get this like i don't look like i can be the mom of like a 14 year old 13 year old and um, then I got a call back the same day. Um, I hadn't even gotten home, and they called me and like, oh, they want you to do a chemistry read, which means I do the same thing I did with the actor, um, yeah. with another actor. So I came back. I did it with Kylie, um, who plays Gabby. Um, and that, you know, went well. But again, I'm kind of like, I see, you know, these other women. I'm like, not nah, going to get it. There's no way. And the weekend passed. And I found out they changed it to a regular, which meant I had to relocate to Vancouver if I were to get it. And I'm like, okay, fine. I mean, if I get it, I get it. And sure enough, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> and they're like, you're moving to Vancouver for six months. <laughs> That's right. Now, you said you played Dina. How would you describe her? Dina Duran. She is, I love her because she she's a single mom, but she's super goal-oriented and um uh, go getter and she's all about her dreams and her job which I really I love to see a mom on TV especially being Latina and a single mom at that kind of still being like a uh, uh, a boss you know yeah. for lack of a better term since that's such a you know trendy thing these days um, girl boss uh, I love that and she's all about family uh, all about her girls um so, yeah. How did you prepare for the role when you first got it? Like, did you do any research for it? Um, well, I got into the books first oh, just to kind yeah. of get a, a feel of, like, really what it what that was like. Um, and honestly, as far as, like, research, just, like, talking to, like, my best friends who have semi-older children, yeah. um, not Gabby's age, but, you know, talking to them about different things that, like, Gabby does and how they would react to it and and. That kind of a thing, right? Because I, I don't have kids, but um, but I can imagine because I'm a good Titi, a good aunt. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a lot of fun, and that's actually been the coolest part is having the show I was on prior hit the floor. It wasn't so much kid friendly, so now finally, like all of my you know my cousins' kids and my best friends' kids, they can all watch me, and I'm like super cool to them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and actually, not because because of me, but because I know Kylie. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, "Oh my god, you know, can, you know, FaceTimer, do you actually remember?" Oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> now, if Dina was like a real person, would you be friends with her? Um, right now, in my life, probably not. Uh, <laughs> she's so about her, literally to go some work to her girls. 
Um, so maybe I don't even know if Dina would have time to go out with me. <laughs> <laughs> but if she did, she's pretty cool. I mean, honestly, she's a really cool mom. Um, she she lets her girls be who they are, which I think is a really a tricky thing as a parent, right? Like, and and yeah. my parents were so strict growing up that I love that Dina lets Gabby be who she is, wear the clothes that she wears, kind of have her little style, and then you know lets Olivia be who she is, and because I have two kids if, um, on the show, so I love that about her. Mm. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if she would have time to hang out with Valerie. <laughs> So how is it working with the cast? I mean, there's a couple of adults on the cast also, but how is it working with them? And then how is it working with the younger kids? It is so different. It's it's so much fun. The kids obviously bring um, an element of surprise that you don't normally get from adults because um, we're so jaded by life. I'm just kidding. Um, but the kids are so spontaneous, um, super crazy talented. They really cast the show really good. So it's funny because you just never know what the days are going to be. And it's it's, it's also really hard because um, the kids are on like this, they call it, they have this pumpkin time. And as you can imagine, like Cinderella, you know, at midnight, she everything turns into a pumpkin, yeah. right? So the thing, same thing happens with the children on set. So after certain hours, they can't work. They have to leave. So Nathan and I, Nathan who plays um, Principal Swift, most of the time when they're doing our coverage, right? So when they turn the camera around, it's our close-ups. We might be talking to a piece of tape or like a stand-in, which is like a person who's staring at you, but they can't talk. So some of the stuff is awkward. <laughs> and you're like, I wish I had a human or I wish I actually had my actors here. So that, that's difficult and funny all at the same time. Um, it just makes the experience just different from yeah. anything else I've ever done. Uh, but it's, it's cool. It's it's neat too because you, I mean, I, I I start thinking like, these kids like their future is so bright and oh and just being at, in their lives for such a, a neat time and and a lot of them this is their first TV show so oh wow you know I don't know I get super sentimental and emotional like you'll never forget this and you know you're gonna be little stars and <laughs> <laughs> do they do they ever I ask you know, for I any advice that. or anything since they're that young. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about, like, acting type of things for, like, advice. But, I mean, these kids have, like, great heads on their shoulders, and all yeah. the parents, too, are, are fantastic. So I, I need advice from them, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Get out of your head. Watch right. these kids. What's you know, the... Be amazing. So, like, what's the funniest thing that's happened to you on set, filming the show? Oh, my gosh. The funniest thing, I, I and mean, I don't know if it's funny funny but the most fun that i had was there's um gosh i'm like it's kind of a spoiler because it hasn't aired but um a funny thing happens and some alien death stuff gets on dina um and so all sorts of things happen to her and um I, gosh i don't know how to describe it without spoiling but so it's that episode and i had a little a stunt double for it and um Lots of makeup stuff had to happen for that. So that, once it airs, the audience will know. Um, <laughs> that was the funniest and the most fun, just because of all the things that had to go into making that happen. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And now you said you're filming season two. When uh, do they think? Right. When do they think season two is going to air? Dude, I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know. I I have no idea. By the way, we finished. We finished filming season one last April. We were supposed to be back October 2019. So we're kind of starting late-ish. But, I mean, this business is kind of like that. Like, yeah. you just never know. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we kind of – I'm thinking maybe October next year to kind of yeah. keep it the same. But I can't That's even great. say that and give you anything that <laughs> might really happen. Cause yeah. Who knows? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So now you recently published a children's book as well. Tell us about that. Yeah. So like I said, it's just something that I've always loved to do. And um, I was born in Puerto Rico and um, Spanish was my first language. And now as an adult, man, I it's embarrassing sometimes because I think in English. Um, and it's sad. You know, like I'm like, man, my, you know, those are my roots. These are my traditions and stuff so it was really important um, for me to do a bilingual children's book um, and something that would be cute and fun and there's a 
a native frog to Puerto Rico, and we call him the coqui. And the coqui is very, um, and he's teeny tiny. He's like the size of like half of your thumb. And he's special because at night, like when the sun's starting to go down, he kind of does this whistle, and it kind of sounds like coqui, coqui, but like. <laughs> And I love it. A lot, some Puerto Ricans are like, oh, it's such a nuisance. And I'm just like, music to my ears. I'm like, they're so cute. <laughs> um, so my main character is this coqui because um, he's not like all the other frogs, right? He doesn't rip it. So he's different and unique. And yet he still sings his song very loud and very proud. So I think that was um, just a, an, an important thing, you know, and especially for kids, being yourself and those type of themes. Um, I mean, even for adults, I think are um, yeah, really important and something that we need to be reminded of, right? So that's kind of how it starts. And um, there's already two other books already written. I'm going to start um, sketching the illustrations for my second book this, uh, probably like next month, once I'm like settled in, settled in. Yeah. That's and great. yeah, it's it's been crazy. It's so exciting. It's been such a learning process. My goodness. I was going to ask you, well, like, what's the like, what's the process? Like, how long did you like for the first book that you did, like how long was were your ideas before? Okay, what's the next step after that? Yeah, so man, so I wrote them a while ago, like, uh, like end of high school. So it's it's been a minute that I've been sitting on this, and I just I'm super ignorant to to that world. I I don't know not a lot about it, but I think throughout the years I kept researching here, researching there, talking to different people who have published or not published or have an agent, don't have an agent. And I finally decided like not knowing or that fear of the what if didn't stop me from doing it. Like who cares? Like, you know, I'll learn as I go. And then that's scary for me because I'm a little bit of a control freak. Um, so I just did it and did a lot of research on self-publishing and stuff like that. Um, printing, I've learned so much about paper, yeah. <laughs> like, like the, the weight of paper and, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, honestly, it was just a lot of Googling. Thanks, Google. Um, and asking for advice from other people, right, who've already done it. Um, and, like, talking to moms again um, and being like, how much, you know, do you guys spend on new books? Like, just, like, random little questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, a, so it was just, like, that little by little, I just, when I run into a problem, I research it and figure it out and, so I think the second book is going to be a lot smoother, and you know, duh, right? Because as you learn, <laughs> you learn and you, <laughs> you keep going, learn. right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's been cool. I mean, it's one of those things that, like, it's such a, it was it's been such a passion project, and such a like Valerie, like good job, like you did it on your own, and, and well, and with you know help with all advice and the support of everybody. Um, that if nothing ever happened, if like literally that was the last thing I did and nothing ever happened again, I'd be just super content and just like proud, yeah. you know? How many, what's your so, goal? How many, how many books do you want to do? Or do you want to just keep going as much as you can? Yeah. Well, I mean, from when I have a series, um, I already have some written, including cookie. Um, I've written another book um, called Sana Sana. Um, and that's about like this little poem that a lot of Latinos do when a little kid like falls. And, and it's funny enough because it's about a frog too, which I was <laughs> after writing it. I was like, dude, it's, there's a frog thing here. Um, and then I have like other ideas of things that I've like halfway written, but aren't completed yeah. like those other three. Um, so, so far that, that's and awesome. I mean, I have poems I've written, um, throughout the years that one day I'd want to turn into a memoir and then throw the poems in um, as like chapter breakers for like where I was in my life. Um, yeah. I mean, who knows? I'm thinking most I'm always like, and then what if? And then what if? So, <laughs> how, how can, how can the listeners uh, find your book? They can go to hola, hello series.com. Um, H O L A. Hello series.com. And yeah, it's all the stuff is on. Um, on the website mm. and then you know they can follow me on instagram too i have the link on my instagram page and i'm on at valerie ortiz and it's valerie with a y um e-r-y at the end and follow along this crazy amazing journey there you go <laughs> what's uh what's next for you in 2020 you got any other uh things coming up 
man, so the second book, number one, obviously season two, yeah. and I don't know. I there, I have so many things that I, I have in like my my bucket list of like traveling yeah. and things I want to do. Um, but you know, lately life has been crazy. A lot of, uh, you know, to be a hundred percent honest, just sad, like loss and stuff like that. So. I'm just going day by day. Like I usually live in the clouds and I'm like five months ahead. Like, and then in September I can, you know, (laughs) (laughs) to be honest lately, I'm like, girl, slow it down. Like just day by day. So um, I'm, I'm taking that route right right now. (laughs) Now I did read online that you support a few charities. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now, um, I need children's charity or my, our, that's like where my head goes. I love the Ronald McDonald house. I have a personal connection to what they do for families um, during obviously such a tragic time. So I'm a huge supporter of them. Um, any children's hospital, I, I support all of them. Um, obviously I live in LA, so I've done stuff for them and um, uh, ch- ch- charities with autism because again, honestly, a lot of them are just because of the connections. And I think when it comes to that stuff, I always tell people, find what moves you, right? Like it yeah. doesn't have to be, you know, breast cancer, the children's um, charities or just whatever moves you or inspires you. Um, look into that and, and see what makes your heart happy, right? You fall into your time. If, you know, it doesn't always have to be money. Time is Time is precious, right? That's irreplaceable so i think that's a really really good way to go so yeah. that's what i that's awesome. encourage people to do yeah. when it comes to charity stuff that's great one last thing what quote do you live by do you have like your favorite quote that you live by yeah so um and it's in spanish but uh it says lo que es pati es pati which is what for you is for you and it's something my mom's always told me um and it is helped me so much just in life um and it, it works throughout my career just you know if it's not for me it, it, it won't be for me right and if That's it right. is then nobody can take it from me um and i think just really knowing that and having that confidence of like if it's mine it's mine like i got yeah. it right obviously you don't just sit back you know you work for you <laughs> things but there's a piece in in that quote so that's great. That's my favorite one. Lastly, could you tell us one more time, how can the listeners find you on social media? Yes, you guys follow me um, on Instagram. I'm at Valerie and Keys. And again, uh, Valerie with a Y at the end. Um, Facebook, um, official Valerie and Keys fan page. Twitter, at Val's Tweet, V-A-L-S Tweet. Uh, is that all of them? <laughs> I think so. I mean, there's probably more out there that we don't know about. I know, but man, I, I, there's too much. I'm getting old to keep up with all these. <laughs> <laughs> Val- Valerie, this was fun. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Cool. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, everybody. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening to the Man Cave Chronicles podcast. I finally get my man cave. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the MCC podcast and our website, the MCC podcast.com. Until next time. Until next time.